Hi, I'm Al, and today Ben and I are going to take a look at our top 10 dips for 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. When it comes to min-maxing, optimizing, and generally getting the most out of your D&D character, one of the best ways to accomplish that is multi-classing. However, not all multi-classes are built equally, and so me and Al wanted to go through our list of our personal favorites that give you the most bang for your buck. First up, at number 10, we have three levels of Battlesmith. The Artificer is the new kid on the block for the D&D &D classes, and the Battlesmith is one of, if not the best subclass for the Artificer. For three levels of Battlesmith, you get a whole lot. At first level, you get spellcasting, including two cantrips. Some really good cantrips are on that list, such as Booming Blade and Guidance. Additionally, you also get Magical Tinkering, which isn't really that good. However, at second level, you get Infusions, which are amazing. You can buff your armor, make your swords better, or you could make yourself a bag of holding. A couple of magic items are on that list. Now, where this dip really shines is at level 3 when you pick your archetype, which is the Battlesmith. As a Battlesmith, not only do you get proficiency in martial weapons, but you can also use your intelligence as your attack and damage modifier with the weapons you are proficient. Additionally, you also get a Steel Defender, which is a companion that has a bunch of hit points that can help you in battle, impose disadvantage on enemies' attacks, and really do a lot of work. Also at third level, you can cast three first level spells per long rest, and there are some pretty good spells on this list, such as Cure Wounds, Shield, and there are a bunch of rituals, and as an Artificer, you are a ritual caster. So you could cast things like Alarm, Identify, or Detect Magic. Being able to use your intelligence as attack and damage rolls really opens up your options, and while it's really nice to be single ability score dependent as an artificer, you can apply this to any sort of build if you take this three level dip. I think it is ideal for Bladesinger Wizards, but there is a lot of things that can get your creative juices flowing with this dip. Next up at number 9 we have the Divination Wizard, a two level dip. Dipping into Wizard you get three cannons trips from one of the best spell lists in the game as well as a couple of spells but where this dip really shines is with the divination portent every long rest you roll 2d20 and then you can use those d20 on future rolls and decide and potentially change the outcome of the roll whether it is a roll that you are making or the dm is making behind the screen this ensures that no matter what you roll, it is pretty good. The only circumstances where it might not work out is if you get middle of the line rolls. Because if I roll really high, such as a natural 20, I'm going to want to use that on my rolls. And if I roll really low, I might want to save that to use as the enemy's saving throw against one of my big splashy effects, like hold person. Being able to decide the outcome of a die roll is really powerful no matter what your character is. A circumstance where I really see this shining is as a rogue. If I really want to make sure that my sneak attack lands, or if I roll a crit for the day, getting a natural 20 and ensuring a really big paladin smite would be really awesome and really powerful for my build. Also, you have ritual casting, which is a powerful class feature to make sure you have those spells like Find Familiar and Identify on hand all the time. Also, you have Arcane Recovery to make those spell slots go a little bit further. At number eight, we have two levels of Druid. Druids are really utility machines, giving you all sorts of value, especially in the early levels. While one level of druid gives you a lot of utility spells, things like healing spells or just exploration spells like fog cloud, the real value of this dip comes from its second level. Not only do you get wild shape, which is one of the best exploration abilities in the game, but you also gain access to your druid circle, which gives all sorts of different benefits. 
if you're really trying to capitalize on that wild shape, then Circle of the Moon can be very useful for that. But I do think there are better options here. One especially being the Circle of Stars. If you are a wisdom caster, like a cleric, and you are trying to get a little bit more value out of your spells, then going Circle of Stars is incredible. First off, the Starry Form ability is ridiculously good, and you are getting free Guiding Bolts, which is a really, really good spell. I would say that the Circle of Shepherds also has some utility for those looking to multi-class, but those first two are the ones you're really going to look at, whether you are dipping in to get a lot of exploration and potential tank utility with that wild shape, or if you are looking to maximize your spell casting ability with the Circle of Stars. And then at number seven, we have Rogue. Again, this would probably be a two-level dip for the most value, though I think an argument can be made for three levels. Just from your first level alone, you are getting sneak attack and expertise, and then after that you get cunning action. What makes this dip so good is that it is really useful on a lot of different kinds of characters. Even if you can't get value out of sneak attack, you can definitely get value out of expertise. And cunning action is going to be useful on pretty much any class that doesn't have bonus action economy. And even if you are in a class that has that bonus action economy, something like a bard or even a monk, having cunning action can be incredibly useful. For a monk, that basically means you can use all of your key on Flurry of Blows. And for something like a bard or a ranger, you have extra options of what to use with your bonus action and are able to get out of the fight if things get a little too sticky. Honestly, the only problem I ever have with dipping into Rogue is that once I start taking levels in Rogue, I don't want to stop because there's a lot of value at third level too. And then fourth level's an ASI, and then fifth level's uncanny dodge. So it can be really hard to not just end up being a rogue. Next up at number six, we have the Undead Warlock. This one is fairly new, just coming out with Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft, but it is a really powerful one-level dip. First off, just for being a warlock at first level, you get one first level spell slot that you can cast per short rest, and you also have a number of cantrips. There are some good picks from this list. First off, you can have Unseen Servant as your first level spell, or Hex, which are both good on a variety of characters. Also for cantrips, you can pick up spells like Booming Blade and Minor Illusion. However, the Undead Warlock takes this even a step further, and you get the Form of Dread. A number of times equal to your proficiency bonus per long rest, you get a number of benefits for a minute as a bonus action. The benefits you get is you get a number of temporary hit points equal to 1d10 plus your warlock level. Additionally, you're immune to the frightened condition, which can shore up your defensibility. And whenever you hit a creature, you can force them to make a wisdom saving throw or be frightened of you. And you can do this once per turn. This dip is extremely versatile. Not only do you increase the utility of your character with those spell slots, but also the form of dread is good on just about any character. You don't have to be a melee fighter or a spellcasting blaster to get the frightened effect from this subclass, which makes it really powerful. There are a large number of creatures that are immune to the frightened condition, but whenever you're facing creatures that aren't, this subclass is going to do absolute work. This dip really shines on other spellcasters and ranged martial characters, because you're able to really shine down an enemy from a distance, not allowing them to get any closer to your party. At the middle of this list, at number five, we have Fey Wanderer. With the release of Tasha's, Ranger is an incredibly strong class now, and dipping into it allows a lot of value to be had. And Fey Wanderer is a particularly strong archetype to build into. Not only can you take advantage of favored 
foe. And not only do you get canny, giving you expertise in a skill of your choice, you get a fighting style, some limited spell casting, Hunter's Mark if you want to take it. And that is all before the archetype features given by Fey Wanderer. Fey Wanderer itself gives you extra damage on your attacks, new spells to pick from, and its secondary feature basically opens up the whole social pillar of play for any character that is trying to focus on their wisdom. By adding their wisdom modifier to charisma checks, if they just have a 10 in charisma, that means they can be very optimally built in all of the social skills, being insight, persuasion, deception, and intimidation. With all of this together, you are enhancing your ability to use skills and the exploration tier of the game. You have greatly increased your social ability at the table, and the combat effectiveness of your character has increased as well. And that is before the extra utility of ranger spells. This is an incredibly powerful dip for basically anybody who is concerned about wisdom. Even wisdom spellcasters, as you are a half caster, you aren't losing out on a whole lot of spells. I also think this is a really good dip for a scout rogue. You're really shoring up on your expertises, you are continuing your damage progression really nicely, and you will be incredibly mobile on the battlefield. Next up at level four, we have a one level dip into Cleric. Cleric gives you a whole lot of value for a one level dip, being a full caster and getting their archetype at level one. One really good benefit of dipping into Cleric is that you can get access to heavy armor because it is a class feature for many of the domains, namely the Life Cleric, Twilight, War, Tempest, and Nature. A highlight of these is the War Cleric, which allows you to make another weapon attack as a bonus action after you've taken the attack action, as long as you do it a number of times equal to your Wisdom modifier per long rest. Being a full caster, you get also get a number of first level spells, as well as cantrips, and you do have the Ritual Caster feature. If you wanted to take this dip a step further, I would highly, highly recommend one of the best cleric subclasses, the Twilight Cleric. If you do, at level 2, you get the Twilight Sanctuary feature. You grant a whole bunch of hit points to your allies. You can end charmed and frightened effects for when they come up. Also, the first level you take in Twilight Cleric, not only do you get that heavy armor proficiency, but you also get martial weapon proficiency, and you get the Eyes of Night feature. Additionally, you can grant you or one of your allies advantage on initiative every time you guys roll for initiative so long as you have an action after the battle. A first level dip into Cleric is great and a second level dip into Twilight Cleric is amazing. At number three we have Paladin. Paladin is really good not only as a class to start in for a couple levels and then dip out of but also one to dip into later down the line. Starting in Paladin gives you heavy armor and martial weapon proficiency, and regardless of if you are dipping into it at the beginning of your build or later on, you are also going to be getting really useful abilities like Lay on Hands, which can be incredibly useful for popping allies back up when they get knocked down. But by taking that second level in Paladin is when we really start to see the value of this multi-class. This multi-class is best utilized on full casters, especially charisma-based ones, so looking at sorcerers and bards. Now the value there comes from the fact that the Paladin Smite ability does not require you to use a Paladin spell slot to use it, so you can use it with any spell slot you have. And this is a really good fast track for the Smite ability to be dealing a lot of damage a lot earlier than the game expects you to. The multi-class requirements can be a little restrictive for certain builds, but I think that there is a lot of value here for anybody who is trying to play a Gish. I think there's also value in this build to be had for Warlocks, especially Blade Warlocks, because you're still getting that Smite ability, and while you are losing out 
on two levels of Warlock, you are also gaining those half-caster spell slots, giving you a little bit more versatility about how your spell slots are used. I think the only problem that Paladin has is the same problem that Rogue has, which is once you start taking levels in Paladin, it can be hard to not want to take more. At number two, we have Fighter. Fighter is an incredibly versatile dip that can be useful for pretty much any class just because of how flexible it is. You can take Fighter on a Ranger for extra fighting styles. You can take it on Rogue to Action Surge and get an extra chance to get Sneak Attack off. Action Surge is also a way to get around the one leveled spell per turn rule. And you could, if you wanted to, take two levels of fighter on your wizard and cast two fireballs in a round. This is also good for any class that gets the extra attack feature, as that is just more chances to hit. This is why fighter can be a really good dip for monks, as at seventh level, you can get six attacks. And normally, a fighter has to wait until 11th level to see that. Two levels of fighter has so much value as a dip. It is incredibly flexible and can be good for pretty much every single class, which is why it has our number two slot. Lastly, at number one, we have a one level dip into Hexblade Warlock. Now, Warlocks are a great dip for the reasons that I outlined in the Undead Warlock. However, the Hexblade takes it even a step further. Not only do you get proficiency in medium armor and shields, but you also have the ability to use your Charisma modifier for your attack and damage rolls with basically any weapon. For ranged weapons, you would need the improved pack weapon invocation, and for two-handed weapons, you would need the Pact of the Blade feature. However, just natively, you get access to using your Charisma modifier on just about every other weapon. And it doesn't stop there. You also get the Hex Warrior feature, which gives you a Hexblade curse that improves your crit range, gives you regaining hit points on the creature's death, as well as a little bit extra damage. And all of that is in addition to the spells and cantrips that you already get from just natively being a warlock at first level. The Hexblade Warlock goes a really long way in making other classes single ability score dependent. So if you are a Swords Bard or a Sorcerer, now you can have this Gish fighting style that is single ability score dependent, and that is absolutely huge. Not to mention the fact that the single ability score that you are now only dependent in is one of the best ability scores in the game. Charisma dominates the social pillar of the game, having both deception and persuasion, as well as intimidation under lock under charisma. Now you can have a really strong charisma, be the face of the party, and really hold your own in combat. Ben mentioned a paladin dip would be good for a warlock, and I think the inverse is true here. If you are a paladin, taking a one level dip in Hexblade makes you single ability score dependent and allows you to really focus on your charisma as your main ability stat, buffing up your spells and making you just a better paladin while still having access to all those juicy smites. For just one level, you really do get an insane amount of value, and I think that is why the Hexblade Warlock Dip is our number one favorite dip. So that is our top 10 favorite dips in Dungeons and Dragons. If you have a dip that you like as well, go ahead and leave a comment down below. We would love to hear it. I am sure we missed some really good builds. And if you got this far in the video, I just wanted to say a huge thank you. It really does mean a lot to us when you watch this far into the video and it really helps us out. Also, if you want to help us out even more, you could consider liking this video or just leaving a comment. Both would help us out immensely. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and we hope to see you on your next short rest. I also want to give a huge shout out to our patrons on Patreon. I can't tell you how much your support means to us. Our patrons of Local Hero Tier and above for this month are Painted Sky and Robert Allen Klaus III. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you on your next short rest.